Hey guys, and welcome back to our Java 2D OpenGL game development tutorial series. I hope you all had a Merry Christmas, and a, I hope you will continue to have a Happy New Year. That said, I want to jump right into this episode because today we're going to uh, be designing a game object class for our game. All objects in our game are going to be instances of this class. So let's go ahead and create that. And we're going to put it in the org.world package right here. I'm going to select that and I'm going to go to new class. And we're going to call it game object. This is exactly the same name as game objects in the Unity game engine, as you probably recognize if you use the Unity game engine. I use it because it's a convenient name that makes sense. I mean, I can call it object, but that's already a thing in Java, um, so that wouldn't that wouldn't work. Um, okay, so what are the properties of an object, a game object specifically? Well, first of all, they have position. I'm going to create a public float called x, set it to 0, and a public float y, set it to 0. I'm going to comment this real quick. The position of the object. Also, it needs to have size, width and height specifically, so we're going to call this the size of the object. Public float width equals zero, public float height equals zero. Because all objects are going to be basically rectangles whenever they're drawn. Um, also it should have a rotation, and we only have one axis that we can rotate in a two-dimensional game. So we're going to say the rotation. Create a public float rotation equals zero. And this is going to be measured in degrees. So, we're going to add two method stubs to this game object. We're going to call one of them public void update. Sorry, not capitalized. Update. And public void render. So, these are the two methods that are going to update the object and render the object. And so, the way that we're going to call these methods is from uh the world class and the yeah the world class because they both get the rendering they, they get the, both the rendering and update calls so right here we've got update in the world class well we want to update the game objects well how do we know where the game objects are this is where collection comes in we're going to need to store them in an array list like so we're going to create a private static array list of type game object and we're going to call this game objects it is equal to a new array list of type game object go ahead and import array list to make that error go away and so what's going to happen is that Anytime we create a game object, we're going to add it to this list of game objects in the world. And anytime we delete a game object, we're going to remove it from this list of game objects in the world. So that during the update method, we can do this. For game object geo in game objects, go dot And where's my code? Okay, there we go. Uh, go dot update. So we go through. I'm gonna comment real quick. Go through all objects and update them. And then in the render class, or uh, sorry, render method, we're gonna do exactly the same thing, except go dot render. So this will cause all the objects in our world to be updated and then rendered. like that because the world is already getting that uh, update and render call and so we can test to see if it works by creating I'm gonna create a package real quick I'm gonna call it org.test and it's gonna hold any test classes I create because I'm gonna create a new class I'm gonna call it 
test player. Test player is uh, test player extends game object. So when I, for those of you who don't know, but I'm sure most of you do, when you say that a class extends another class, it means you're saying it is one of those. I'm saying that test player is a game object. And so therefore it inherits all of the properties of a game object, which don't forget to import game object. Um, so this means that even though I can't see the fields right here, uh, it has the x, y, width, height, and rotation values we added to the uh, game object previously. Also, oh, sorry. Um, also, when you render, uh, or when you call update or render on this game object here, that applies to uh, this test player class right here. So that means that the test player object, when it's added to the world, will be treated just like a game object and will be updated and rendered as such. So, what we can do now is we can, we can override the public void update with our own code. That's what this little green triangle and eclipse means. It says I'm overriding this method right here. So that's all good because that's what we want. We want to fill the update method with code that we get, are actually going to use. In fact, in the game object class, I like to leave a little comment right here that says implement in subclass to indicate that these methods are not ever meant to actually do anything in the game object class itself, but in the specific types of game objects we create from it. So in the update method, let's just say x plus equals 0.1f. This way we can sort of move the object around. And then in the render method, public void render, we just say graphics dot draw, no let's say fill rect uh, x, y, width, and height. Notice they're all filled in already because of the way we named the parameters. x, y, width, and height, which are in the game object class of which test player is one, uh, we've got x, y, width, and height. And so in our update method, we simply add 0.1f to x every single frame. So the way we're going to have, so in order to test this, go into the main class, renderers initialized game loop has started, a bit of test code right here. I like to mark it test code so I can get rid of it later. And what we're going to do is we're going to say test player no we'll just say world dot add object new test player now yes we will get an error because we didn't create the add object method yet so if we go into uh, world public static void add object takes a game object as a parameter and we simply say game objects dot add go now this is actually a bad way to do this and you'll see why later on well whenever we get to uh, working on this class more we're gonna change the way we add the objects I'll go ahead and tell you why it's bad the reason why it's bad is because most likely the add object method is going to be called while we're updating objects because that's where the game logic is called so like you might have an uh, a player object where we check to see using the update method we check to see if the player is holding down a certain key and if they are then add a bullet so while we're updating an object while we're in the update method uh, and in this little loop right here we add an object and you're not supposed to modify uh, an array list, or rather any list, you're not supposed to modify the list while you're iterating through the list, which is what we're doing here. When we say for game object go in game object, we're going through this list uh, one item at a time and performing this loop. And what we don't want to do is modify that list while we're going through it. You'll get what's called a concurrent modification exception. I get lots of those. Uh, and you'll see what we're going to end up doing to fix that later on. Uh, but for right now, all you need to know is that we create a test player object and add it to the world. So what we should get, if all of the code we just wrote works and my code usually doesn't work on the first try, 
what will happen is we'll start the game and we'll watch a uh, square appear in the middle of the screen and move slowly to the right. Let's see if that's what happens. Hope my computer doesn't freeze again. And nothing. Why not? Unless it just happened too quickly while the renderer was starting up. Nope, I'm not seeing it. Let's go make sure our re uh, render method is being called. We can do that by saying system.out.println render. And go ahead and start it. And if we quit it, yeah, we are getting the render call. Oh, okay, it's something very obvious. Uh, back in the game object class, width and height are zero. Obviously, that's going to be nothing. Set them to one each, because these are not measured in pixels, if you remember. They're measured in units that we defined earlier. So go ahead and run the game again. This time it should work. And it does. Pretty cool, huh? Uh, so that's an example of the game object class. Um, this is actually, it looks very simple, but it's very powerful, because by having the world collect game objects like this in this uh, array list, we can basically, this world class now acts as the world. We can create a new object, add it to the world, it'll automatically be updated and rendered with no additional code. Uh, so yeah, um, I'll probably upload this video later today. I'm recording this, uh, recording this in the morning, but I won't be able to upload it until uh, I get the internet working. Our, uh, my internet connection is not working properly. Um, so yeah, if you like this episode, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for new videos every Monday through Friday. Um, except yesterday, obviously yesterday was Christmas. Uh, and also I want to uh, mention next Monday is New Year's, so I won't be putting a video on Monday probably, but I will be continue to put them up. Uh, I will do Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then I'll start again next Monday after that. So again, thank you for watching, and I will see you guys next time.